Hello, my name is Rosemary Manners and I'm Australia's leading natural and traditional pharmacist. I'm so lucky and I'm so happy that you're here today. Um, we're, talk, we're here today to talk about reversing cognitive decline. And the idea that I want you to leave here today is we're not looking for a silver bullet. So far in science, there are no silver bullets for reversing cognitive decline. So what we're looking for is a silver buckshot. And that means that we can reverse cognitive decline if we look in a number of different areas rather than just one area with one drug. So I wanted to introduce you to Dr. Bresident. And Dr. Bresident, and this is a picture of him because it's good to have a look at what, who he is. And Dr. Bresident is the first man um, ever to run a clinical trial that reversed cognitive decline. And that's so exciting. So he's been studying um, ageing and cognitive decline for over 20 years and he started off in mice and it, it actually when he got up on stage he said I thought I'd never be on stage. He thought he'd only go down in history as a guy who studied mice and rats. But his mice and rat study came came through, he went, went to humans and then the human um, clinical trial came through positive as well. So that's a great thing for us to learn from is learn from Dr. Bresident's um, study, what, he, what um, strategies he came up with and then put it in with our own strategies to treat cognitive decline and in particular Alzheimer's disease or dementia or just forgetting the keys. It's all will be, they'll all be, um, be able to help um, with his strategies. So he looks at Alzheimer's disease and really up to this study, it was looked at as a mysterious disease, a mysterious, untreatable brain disease. You go to the doctor, the doctor would diagnose it and say, I'm sorry, you've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Um, and then they'd start looking at strategies of who's going to look after you rather than strategies of saying, well, whether we can reverse it. So now it's fantastic um, to have some hope out there. And instead of um, it being thought of as a mysterious, untreatable brain disease, we can look at it as a reversible systematic metabolic syndrome. And that means given the right conditions, we can reverse this disease. Um, and to explain this, um, Dr. President talks about a leaking roof. And this leaking roof has 36 different leaks in it. And if we treat all 36 leaks or the 36 holes then we could expect the roof not to leak. If we only treat one, two, three, four, five holes, well what's going to happen to the roof? It's still going to be leaking. So we want to be able to come up with strategies where we're treating all, all the holes, all the leaks, all simultaneously and then we can expect change. So what is Alzheimer's disease? So Alzheimer's disease may be viewed as a protective um, reaction by the body um, and it's protecting that brain and it makes these amyloid plaques in a downgrading as they as your brain is downgraded um, it tries to protect it from whatever is happening and from Dr. Bresden's studies there are three things that can happen and that's where the treatments come in so what the first one is inflammation so the inflammation can come from um, just like an arthritis, damage in your body that creates inflammation, or come, could come from an infectious type um, an infectious type thing. But it's a matter of finding the inflammation and being able to reverse that inflammatory process. The second thing we want to look at is withdrawal of trophic support. So we're looking at your brain chemicals, your enzymes, your hormones, all the things that we um, measure on blood tests to get a really good picture of what's gone wrong and be able to reverse all those figures to 120%. We don't want to just get into the therapeutic range. We want to get up there to 120%. Um, the third protective thing the brain tries to protect itself is for poisons or toxins or metals that shouldn't be in the body. And, and we want to have a look at those levels and be able to um, optimize them as well as we possibly can. So they're the three areas where we want to be really on top of and know exactly where we're at. So many people ask me, when shall I treat? And the thing is, the earlier you treat, the better success you have. So it's never too soon. So I think 
putting strategies in your life when you're 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. I put strategies in life all the way through and some of the strategies in this program are really easy to follow. So why don't we put it in now? Um, we also need to know that it takes time. So if we're starting a program for cognitive decline, we have to understand that cognitive decline has been happening for quite a long time. And we can often go back into your, um, your life story and see, and see signs for as much as 20 years ago. And so we need to know that it's going to take at least six months before we start seeing any, any change. Uh, but that's okay, six months will go really fast and if we work really hard then we'll expect to see change. And we can never do too much because we know there's all those holes, those 36 different holes and if we're only treating five of them that's not going to be enough. So the alternative isn't good so we want to get as many of those holes and work to optimise those leaks as much as we can. It's no use just putting a thin bit of paper over it, that roof will still leak so we want to be able to uh, work really hard to get the best outcome that we can possibly have. And so we need to think of it as a complicated imbalance. We're going to make it really easy and we're going to try and make the least amount of complication possible but the brain is downsizing because of a signal, signaling imbalance and so we want to tip that back and so we need to think of it as a complicated imbalance so that we can we can create an answer or strategies that are not just one strategy, that are quite a comprehensive strategy. And the strategies that we come up with are going to be aimed at the three, the three things that we've already talked about, but I want to keep on talking about it and keep on coming back to it because that's where we see the big changes, is when we're treating inflammation, when we're treat, treating the withdrawal of tropic support and when we're really getting on top of any toxins that shouldn't be there. So Dr. Bresden has gone on to um, be able to get um, a classification of the different types of Alzheimer's disease based on those three drivers. So there's the inflammatory hot um, Alzheimer's disease, which is type one. And we can measure this. Um, high sensitivity C-reactive protein it's going to be on most blood tests. So that can already give us a bit of an in indication of if whether that is part of, our, part of what we need to treat. Um, type 2 is all about trophic support and trophic withdrawal. So we've got a lot of testing to do in that sort of area. We can look at hormone levels. We can look at your cardiovascular profile. We want to know what's happening with your vitamin D. We'll also um, see if we can get some testing for some of the brain chemicals that we're really interested with. Um, there is a 1.5, which is a mixture of both of these, um, and I don't think that's particularly um, unusual, especially if we're coming from a metabolic syndrome back, like if we're coming out of a metabolic syndrome and it's going on to Alzheimer's disease, we often see a mixture of type 1 and type 2 together. The type 3 is called vile and it's a more toxic formula. It can happen um, often with early onset Alzheimer's disease when there's some sort of toxicity involved. It can be surgical implants, it can be Lyme's disease, it can be mycoplasma, it can be some sort of infection that you've had. It e can even be the mercury from your fillings. So we want to be able to isolate what it is that's pushing the disease and have strategies around this and being able to remove whatever it's there that's pushing the disease. Um, so we've got a basic concept that we want to work with. We want to identify the leaks, the contributors, and find out what exactly they are. We want to determine the degree of um, contribution of each of the contributors and we want to be able to optimise the value. So it's not enough just to get you back into therapeutic range. We want you right up at the best we can possibly do within that therapeutic range. Uh, we want to address all the contributors, so have strategies around them all. We don't want to leave any leaks in that roof. And we want to personalise the program because out of 36 possible leaks, everybody's going to have a different possibilities in those 36. So we might um, treat you for 10, where the person next to you we might treat for a completely different 10. So we want to be able to personalise the program to get the most out of the program for you. So how I do this is I've created a mind map for health. And the idea of the mind map for health, it creates us a strategy. It creates us a, 
a building block of where we can where we can go and where we can treat. So you can see um, that I've got those big pink circles and the pink circles are for the strategies in every different areas of your life. So we want a really sound testing, testing strategy. So if we're going to be optimizing the testing, we want to know where you are now, where you are in a month's time and be able to really pinpoint our um, wins along the way. We want a really good nutritional backbone to the whole um, to the whole plan. We want to make sure that we've got the right evidence-based supplements um, to address the leaking leaking holes. Uh, we want to make sure that you've got some lifestyle changes. We want some exercise. We want to look at your yoga, meditation, mindfulness. They all fit in that pink circle. We want to make sure that your mindset is part of what we're doing. Reading, reading is, I think, is the most underrated way of therapy ever but making sure that you're reading the right books and creating more knowledge in the area and also connection to others and global transformation so those last two are often forgotten in a health health plan but I know that if I have really positive connections I feel so much better my vitality my movement my emotions are so much better after having a positive um, connection and it could be something I've planned it could be a girlfriend that I haven't seen for a few years and we sit down and have lunch and come away feeling fantastic but it could also be the connection I have with the butcher or the green grocer is creating as much positive connections as I can in my life and rather than leaving it to um, circumstance or whatever's happening if there has to be time to have strategies in there to be able to build on that so you might have some clubs you might have an exercise club you might have a book club you might create some um, positive connections in your life on a daily or weekly basis global transformation is a winner for everybody if I'm putting something back into my family something back into uh, my community or something back into the world I feel great also whoever I'm putting back in feels great so we're both winners so having some sort of strategy in there for that is I think it's really important as well. So once we've planned um, the top part and we've got all the pink circles in there, so we've got our strategies, you're going to say to me, well, Rosemary, we're going to really have problems to keep up with all those strategies all the time. So that's when the 10 easy to do things come in. So you can see those yellow stars in there. And the idea of the yellow stars is to create easy to do things. So there's a guy called Fogg and he's a psychologist in America and he's created the Fogg behavioural model. And what he says, which is so true, if I think of hard to do things, so if I create a strategy that's quite hard to do, I need a lot of motivation and I might not even get to that motivation to trigger me into doing that particular thing. But if I think of an easy to do thing to do, I don't need a lot of motivation and I'd usually just that done. So Fogg says, why don't you think of 10 easy to do things and get them done rather than procrastinating over one hard to do thing? And to me, that makes sense. So the yellow stars are to create easy to do things that are heading towards your big, your big pink goal, um, but they're easy to do things um, that I can do every day and maybe even tick them off on the list. So that's where we want to go. We want to create easy to do things that we can move forward on. So in each of these pink circles, there's work to do. So extensive testing, confining contributing agents. So, so you can help for this. Like I'll give you the tests that we want to optimize. You might create some spreadsheets or some ideas so that we can all understand wh what testing we need to do and what figures we want to start seeing. Nutrition. So Dr. Bresden says almost no one, that's almost no one with cognitive decline presents with an optimal diet. Well, there's it for you, if ever. So I want to see you with an optimal diet plus, plus, plus. So creating strategies so that we know what an optimal diet is and making sure that we meet those parameters every day. For that, we want to get rid of the baddies, not even baddies on a Sunday or a Friday or whatever. We want to get rid of the simple carbohydrates, the saturated fats, the low fiber, they all have to go. We want to love the carbohydrates, the vegetables, the low GI fruits, throw in some detoxifying vegetables. These are the foods that were going to be the foundation and the backbone of our eating plan. And that's all where all the nutrients and vitamins, our brain needs all those nutrients and vitamins to work. So if we've been starving them of those nutrients and vitamins, we can see why there's things that are happening. 
So we want to be able to to drown our body in that in our brains in those nutrients and vitamins. Our fat, our brain very much works on fat. So making sure we have enough good fats to power up our brain. Avocado, coconut oil, MCT oil. Put extra in, um, just so that we've got enough good fats in there uh, for a brain. We'll also find that fats will bring down the inflammatory, some of the inflammatory um, markers. So that's going to be a double whammy in there. Protein repairs and maintenance. So think of protein as the building blocks, the repair man, the maintenance man, and making sure that we have enough in there every day. So what is enough? Um, enough is a palm size in each meal. So it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you'll tell me dinner is really easy. You'll tell me that breakfast is the most challenging. But having, but having a way that we can get protein into you three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We want to have anything that's going to create inflammation. So at the top of the list, I'm going to put gluten and dairy, but we're also going to look at any other sensitivity that you might have and get them out of the picture. Because if we already know inflammatory inflammation is going to push the picture, we want anything that's going to create inflammation out of the picture completely. We're very, we know that we're interested in toxicity and being able to minimise the toxicity as much as we possibly can. And that might be choosing organic all the time. But if it's not choosing organic all the time, then we need to know what the dirty dozen are. And the dirty dozen are the list of fruit and vegetables that, are, that contain the most toxins and most chemicals and being able to minimise that. So if I'm buying organic, I'm going to buy organic from this list um, and then just try and buy locally the clean 15 or ideally as I said we want everything organic so find a good organic supplier and make sure that you've got plentiful plentiful supplies of your fruit and vegetables we want to look at evidence-based supplements and we want to tailor it to you so we want to look at hormone optimization we want to make sure you've got um, a good a range a good selection of herbs to help um, support the brain. I've put Dr. Bresident's favorite herbs into a tonic, which I call Memorizer, that's available in the pharmacy. Um, but we can change the tonic or we can optimize the tonic to uh, what, what would be the best for you. We want to look at antioxidants. Resveratrol is the antioxidants that's had the most research in this direction. We want to make sure that we've got the good fats back up, backing up our diet. So it's omega-3, um, coconut oil, MCT, coenzyme Q10 comes in the form of ubiquinol, D-ribose, homocysteine levels, anything that we need to balance that. Vitamin D is so important. I really want the levels over, over 80. So having a look at your pathology, seeing where you are, making sure that we've got D and K in there if we need them. Uh, with digestive healing is really important. We want to be able to get, it's no, it's no use eating all those great foods if we're not absorbing all the minerals and vitamins out of those foods. So we want to make sure the digestive um, system is optimized as much as we possibly can. We want to have a conversation about microbiome. So the microbiome is the bugs that live in your gut and making sure that they are the most healthy bugs that you could possibly have. Optimizing sugar levels is really, really important and having strategies for that. Having strategies for detoxification and making sure that the microbiome and my antimicrobials are there if we need them. Um, so the evidence-based supplements are very much tailored to the individual person but that's a sort of that's a sort of directions that we're looking um, lifestyle meditation has to be at the top of the first first in any lifestyle um, consideration is having some strategy around there with meditation and clinical studies come back to say even six minutes a day it's going to get you somewhere so six minutes a day meditation i'll teach you how to do it it's a matter of putting it in every day um, the two other strategies that Dr. Bresidon is very uh, particular about are these two. One is to sleep for eight hours a day. And there's very much a thought um, that as you get older, you don't need as much sleep, which is fine, but you do. So the research has come back that we, that we do need eight hours of sleep, uh, eight hours a night of sleep, whether you're five or you're 99, eight hours minimum. So creating creating a way where you can have eight hours sleep. So it might need herbs, it might need medication to get your body into that eight hour routine. 
His second strategy is a 12 hour fast a day. Now don't stop now. Let's just explain to you this 12 hour fast. So the first three hours before bedtime. So the idea here is to have dinner around about seven o'clock. You might go to bed at 10 and then you'll have breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning. So it's not as hard as you might always, that fast word. As soon as you say fast, everybody sort of stops listening but we can do this 12 hour fast before bedtime you can still have your breakfast lunch and dinner it's just letting your body at night rather than spending all night digesting food is to be able to create some healing um, during the night and be able to to get your system up and running and if it's digesting food 24 hours a day I can see where this might be a bit of a problem so the 12 hours fast at night to me is a great strategy that we can do at any time during our lifetime the other um, big one here is brain exercise and being able to push your brain in areas that it hasn't been pushed before. So it's no use saying, oh, I do the crossword every day. Well, that's not pushing it because you do it every day. So you might want to take up a new instrument. You might want to look at languages. You might want to try a different puzzle or a different um, computer program. But be forever challenging that brain in new directions and you might find it difficult to begin with but keep on persevering because we want to exercise the brain like you would exercise your legs to run a running race. We want to exercise the brain to get stronger and fitter in directions it's never been before. Okay so you're going to love the next picture. What Ha <laughs> ha! So exercise your body for 30 minutes every day. So that's every day being able to move your body five times a week we want to increase it to an hour if you do any more of an hour it's a bonus it's extra we want the exercise to be a mixture of aerobic and strength and being able to sort of you do an exercise that you really enjoy and that you really love and it doesn't always have to be the same exercise but being able to make sure that we can tick this one off every day mindset is so important with the brain. The brain does not go very well for stress, adrenal fatigue, um, negative thoughts. Putting that together just pulls the brain in the wrong direction. So we want to create a life that you want to live a, and to do the things that you love to do. We want lots of positive thoughts. We want lots of hope. We've got hope up on the list now. Now that we've run a trial that reversed Alzheimer's disease, there's nothing wrong with hoping because we know it's very possible to hope and create the life that we want to leave. So have a mindset strategy, have some ideas around mindset. So now I'm gonna talk about what I sometimes hear in the clinic and I'll always pull you up on this. This is my list of objections and I hear them all the time. I don't wanna give up ice cream. Oh, is one square of chocolate okay? And Friday night is pizza night. I can't eat dinner until late at night. I have sugar cravings. My husband is the same as me. He eats the same as me. What's wrong with that? Um, coconut oil is a saturated fat. Isn't that bad? Um, I can't get more than five hours sleep. That's it. I've always had five hours sleep. Um, this sounds very complicated. I don't think I'll be able to do it. I'll just do one or two of the strategies. So when I start hearing this, I feel so sad because I just don't think I don't think you're going to get to your um, optimum, your optimum results if these are your belief structure. And beliefs are really, really funny because we all hold lots of beliefs within us. And some of the beliefs really help us and really move us in the same direction. But sometimes we hold on to these other beliefs that we think are truths that are not truths. Like ice cream is not going to help me if I eat that every day. But I, if I believe it does, then it's not truth, but I believe it is a truth and it makes it really hard. So looking at some of the decisions that of what are the programs that I'm running in the brain and really working out whether they're the ones that are going to help us the most. And if they're not going to help us, well, let them go. We don't need them. Um, but I do see success and this is the sort of success that I see. I see success when people are really diligent with my health programs, where they ring me up and ask me, why, why did I write that in the book? Is that really what I meant? Like they're onto the detail and why is, I, why is bananas in the, in this, on this list? And really sort of understanding what's behind it. Um, when I we really want to improve their lab results and um, sometimes I've had uh, some of my clients map them at home. Like they, they give me spreadsheets of where their thyroids have been before or after a particular time. 
So that's really amazing. And I want a whole team. Like it's not enough. You've seen that we've got to make big changes. We've got 36 different holes. It's too much for one person. So I'd love to see your whole health team here in my clinic rooms, not just one of you on a big journey. I'd like to see your whole support team because together we can all work together to create a most amazing outcome. You need to be following up. You need to be looking at your test levels and getting repeated optimization. And it really helps if you have a doctor on your team or, or some other health professionals that really want to be part of your team and having working having a strategy that we can sort of we can set up so we can all communicate with each other and we can do this we can really put this together and we can really optimize where you are at the moment so the first step is to team together and make an appointment with me so the first appointment is $99 and what we do during that time is that we um we get a history and look at try and get as much information about your past um, pathology results as we can. I have some in-house testing. We look at look at body composition. We look at your microbiome with an Indicans test, and we also look at heavy metal toxicity screening. Just in my clinic, just finding out as much as we possibly can, and then we start creating strategies um, that will that will be the foundation of where we go and the program that we'll go through in the future. So welcome to Reverse Cognitive Decline. I hope you've learned um, lots and I hope I'll see you in the clinic in a very short time. So the easiest way to book into clinic is probably to ring the pharmacy 99694700. Otherwise email me and we'll book you in and we'll take the first steps to, towards reversing cognitive decline. Thanks for listening to my video and I'll see you in clinic soon.